Got a couple of more observations for you. When is the best time to stop investing energy in our goals? I mean, every business and family has them. But is it time to stop trying so hard? Plus, I love sauerkraut every single morning. It's three huge forks full of this magical creation. Is sauerkraut good or bad for us? My name is Harold. I am a daily writer, a silent wolf. That means I stand on the sidelines and do nothing but watch, listen, study, then activate. I call it the daily mess, a chronological walk through an everyday world. Yes, it's my morning writing. As a receiver of thoughts and ideas, we as people tend to throw things to the side and deal with it much later on. When a subject arrives inside my heart, I know it's time to dig in. It's still keeping that daily journal, but by doing the research, the pictures become clearer. This is the daily mess. Observation number 87. When is the best time to stop investing energy into a goal? To walk away, to break free. So many answers are readily available. One such thought? When the risk outweighs the reward. When the goal is having negative effects on your health and relationships. Number two, it's time to stop a goal when you no longer feel confident or passionate about it. The physical act of being totally engaged is gone. Don't be shocked if you're not having full visions of the future. Number three, goals should be stopped when failure is consistent. The experts say this is usually caused due to no longer enjoying the work. Number four, stop trying to maintain a goal when you're expected to do something impossible. This is a true sign of, oh my God, I'm burned out. Number five, know your work environment. If it's toxic, time to shut off the goal. You see, knowing when to walk away is actually a very important skill set. Automobile makers are some of the best decision seekers, and so are those in the world of fashion. When it's time to step free of a goal, your new goal should be locate a new belief in other ways to create. Hey, coming up next, I love sauerkraut. But is it a great probiotic? Hey, thanks for coming back to The Daily Mess. Observation number 88. With so many different ways to gain access to probiotics, from kombucha to swallowing supplements, is sauerkraut a great way into the game? Yes, it is. The one-time head of cabbage is beneficial for gut health. In fact, what it contains is far more abundant than the easy-to-go-to yogurt. Two ounces of sauerkraut contains more probiotics than 100 capsules. Sauerkraut does amazing things for your digestion system, building your immune system, reducing the risk of certain diseases, and it helps with weight loss. But, 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 store purchase sauerkraut may not offer the same benefits as homemade. Number one reason? Preservatives. And it's pasteurized to extend the shelf life. Pasteurization kills off beneficial bacteria. Now, I know what people say when you bring up the subject of sauerkraut. Ooh, I can't stand the flavor. Uh Uh-uh, I'm not going there. Well, there are some things that you can add to sauerkraut that will make it taste a hell of a lot better. I use soy sauce. It gives it a great texture. You can also add berries or raisins, ginger, lemon. Dill is another way to help rid that bitter taste when it comes to sauerkraut. Another one of my favorites is the good old-fashioned bottle of mustard. I'm Arrow, and that's The Daily Mess.